ready for another lesson. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie shock podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about the movie Challengers. But of course, before we get to any of that, I'm joined today by Net Nathaniel, Nathaniel Gingrich. What up, folks? I'm Net Nathaniel, and you may think I'm part of the internet, but I'm actually a tennis net. I'm not very big, tennis but net. I'm at an annoyingly high height for anyone who wants to try and jump me. That was one of the things early on in the movie. Mike faced like jumps over the like hurdles the net very effortlessly, and I was hey, just don't do that ever. I've, yeah. I've I've witnessed I've witnessed kids face plant Dude, and like it's, it's, chip a tooth and yeah. like Ooh. it's bad. Like you're not supposed to do that. It's very bad. I've seen it's way too many movie. like Tosh point oh videos of people with just screwed up faces afterwards of trying to do one yes. Of those. How, how high is that, do that off the ground? That's got to be what probably what four. But, no, it's about three. Something. Yeah, it's like no, it's no, just no, high it's enough good. that you it's think you can do it, four. and then your back toe hits it, and then you're just yeah, face first right. into the it's, ground. It's, right, right, yeah. Uh, how high high is a tennis net? I feel like I should know this, but I don't. Uh, but anyways, that's me. I'm Net Nathaniel. <clears throat> Excuse me. When was this? Oh six, right? Oh, it is exactly three. The feet. movie? Yeah. No, it's set in like twenty like nineteen. Oh, the earliest oh, part. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. So it jumps it time zone. So, so it would have been yeah, like yeah. I don't even. Fucking... It would have been like 2006. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, things were loose Period. back then. It's true. Things were loose. You could, you could jump I'm nets. Say, I'm not. I, all I'm saying is that I was impressed with my boy's athleticism. I mean, like yeah. in the movie itself, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he just he hurdles it like it's nothing. Everybody looked good. That, facts. Yeah. I mean, let's not <laughs> let's not beat around the. Bush. No one was no one was skimping on 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 the weights and the trainings in no. this video in no. this movie. You're saying. Yeah. yeah, everyone looked like they played professional tennis. You're not wrong. So, with a lot of CGI tennis balls, you yeah. don't know <laughs> that. I do. I do. Like, you mean to tell me they weren't actually out there doing that shit? You mean to tell <laughs> me? What you're telling me Zendaya they, 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 they are not they are. number fifth ranked in the world. <laughs> hey, they looked good though. For you know, they yeah, it did man. Playing. They made it work. They, they, they sold it. They sold it well. Also joining us today is Top Spin Ty Tyler Vidalis. Dude, what a sick game Top Spin was. Then played it. No? No. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Is that the thing where you just like spin the shit on the table? No, it was a uh, it was an actual like Xbox like game, I think. Oh. I'm pretty yeah, sure. It's it called Top Spin. About. Well, they just brought is it Top Spin? Is that the name of the new one that just came out? I don't know. I mm -hmm. thought it was older. Top Top Spin 2K25. Yeah, here we go. Well, it's yeah, be it going just for a came while. out a week ago, April 23rd. Just Players. for the movie. Yeah. Just in time. Just for the movie. I wonder if they're um, like, I wonder I if those are I've... like playable skins in the game. Yeah. You know, like Dude, Call of Duty, Fortnite, cool. you get skins. You, you I, wonder, I wonder if they have a Paul Atreides skin. They might. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> Call, <laughs> Call of Duty does. <laughs> that... Are you serious? Yeah, I sent them to all you no. guys. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I sent them to you guys in Snap. What the? Fuck? I sent you those ones. You no, know, you sent us the Godzilla I ones. I sent you the other ones okay. before but too. I did, I, I did hear that there were Dune ones. Yeah, I wasn't are. aware of that. I'm I'm not on Snap, so I yeah. didn't catch that. But just so I'm clear, oh, maybe there's I a sent Paul there. Atreides Call of Duty skin. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a it there's is, a Paul it Atreides. Timothy Chalamet. And yeah, it's actually him. Um. It, there's also an Austin Butler one as Fade. Um, and then there's a there's a soldier <laughs> there's a car. for. Star for each uh, each class. How much do those cost? What is what do they charge uh, the microtransactions? They got to be like I think they're twenty days. to twenty five per. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus Christ! But they make it yeah. they make it try to even out because they give you like credits to go back into the you know what I mean? Yeah, like you yeah, pay twenty four dollars yeah. and then you probably get like ten dollars worth of credits back. In, gotcha. But you just got you yeah. still got to spend it in the game. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. But right. I mean, I told myself a long time ago. Uh, that you'll never catch me spending money on one of these ever again. The last one I did it was probably when Nathaniel and I were still living together and we bought the Halloween ones. That because, one was sick. Mm -hmm. um, I got Leatherface and you. who'd you get? Uh, Ooh, uh, the Saw guy. Oh, Jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, that actually sounds pretty cool. They were Those they were dope. Cool. They were dope. Okay. And there's a ghost face too. Yeah, there was last year. They did release yeah. a ghost face. Okay, now that sounds familiar. I think I remember yeah. seeing some stuff about that. So that I mean um, they do some pretty good jobs. But I mean yeah. some of I mean the microtransactions are just astronomically bad. Yeah. In every game. It's crazy. But you know, I'm over here top spinning. So top spinning. <laughs> And around, rounding out the uh, doubles court, of course, is big backhand oh, blade. Oh, you see what he did there. Hey, crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. The backhand? Yeah. I, I had a big backhand myself. I played tennis. That was uh, kind of my go-to shot. Nice, dude. What were you ranked? Uh, negative <laughs> a million. I was not now, ranked anything. Now, you played tennis in, in high school, right? Yes. Is yes, that played on what are the surfaces called? There's clay, which I know is Yeah. Good. What's the um, other what's the green surface called? Grass and then it's just like a concrete. Like the green okay, the green surface that like I see when I walk past the tennis court right now. That's concrete. Yeah, that's just you know like a, this is like a concrete. Yeah. I don't know green. the official material. Yeah, it can okay. be different colors, like blue, green. I gotcha. Okay. Red. I gotcha. Like yeah. there will be a bunch of different what colors. What isn't isn't what Wimbledon's play, played on grass? What, Wimbledon's on grass, correct. And um, so what is it? Al- is Australia on? No, um, that's concrete. That's just the regular. Yeah, France which is the, on what's the hard, what's hard, hard, court? hard court is what they call it. Okay. Um, clay is the French Open. So there's that's two: the is. U.S. Open and the Australian Open are hard court. The French Open's clay and Wimbledon's grass. Uh, mm. I've never played on clay or grass. Um, I've really only ever played on hard court. There is a clay, uh, there are clay courts in the area in Barrington, actually, right next to AMC. Barrington is the oh, Barrington Tennis yeah, Club. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have clay courts. So as you drive in, you take a left by Lucky Yeah, yeah I there. know where that is. They have, huh. they have clay courts at that tennis club there. It now, feels... that's obviously put a different element to the game, right, in terms of, like, it ball changes speed, it, bounce, everything, right. right, I could imagine. Right, yeah. so, so clay really slows the ball down a lot, so it slows down your game. There's a lot more drop shots, too, because the ball doesn't bounce as high. So right. people will drop shot a lot more because the ball doesn't lift off the ground and you have less time to get to it. Um, clay and grass uh, seem so much safer for your knees. Oh, correct. You- <laughs> well, yeah, yes and no. Clay, you can, you, clay is tricky because if you hit a dry patch, then you really fuck up your knees. Like, there, oh, uh, sure. Alexander Zverev, I think his name is, uh, fucked up his knee uh, mm-hmm. a few years ago because he just hit a hit a dry spot trying to slide for a shot and just mm-hmm. just completely messed up his knee. He's kind of coming back now, but um, what kind of shoes do they use in that? Right. Like I would imagine obviously on, on hard court, right. That's gotta be like some sort of flat surface, like shoe sneaker type of thing on grass and clay. Does any, like, does that have, is it like golf shoes? I would say they might be tennis. Right, shoes. It's got to be something that's got some sort of, you don't think it's anything that's got some sort of like no, texture I, or no, like I think, from, I think from my understanding, I th- it, I think... it's all the same shoe. I don't think there's oh, really different really? shoes for different surfaces. Yeah. I, I was okay. just saying that you'll see if you watch if you watch players uh play on clay a lot, they are constantly hitting their shoes with the racket to knock clay off their shoes. I gotcha. I was what just gonna say, Nathaniel. Well, like the modern sneaker, like people call it the tennis shoe. And I was saying like it's probably like you okay. know, tennis shoes were what everyone now considers just like athletic shoes, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, that was my thought. Interesting. I'm sure it's flat bottom. Okay. Back in the day on like grass and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. flat bottom. Oh, flat bottom. Flat bottom girls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Any who's? Anyways. <laughs> Any who's it? This movie didn't want to make me. Grab my rackets, play some tennis. Whoa. Haven't Did played it? in a while. Is that a euphemism? Did, did you want to really no. get back out there? I did. I did. Do you even have anybody to play with? Like, do you, like, have any, like, you know, any friends close by or anybody you'd be, like, call up? And be, like, hey, um, man, let's go play a couple rounds. Did you bunk with anyone since you were 12? Kind of. No, did you I go did to not. boarding school? Uh, um, No, I did not. Is this um, a documentary about your life? <laughs> <laughs> No, it is not. Um, <laughs> but no, I've got a, I've got a few friends here and there. Uh, not a ton of people that I keep in touch with, but like, I don't know I've got a few friends I could hit up. Yeah. Um, 
I've got a few friends that are still in school that I could hit up that are a little bit that are a year or two younger than me sure. um, that I played with. So got to figure that out. But we got to go golf. Um, we got to get you out there. We got to go golfing. I got to get into pickleball. I got yeah, a lot of things. And, and I'm playing rec Everybody baseball. We got a, We got a whole lot of whole busy summer ahead of us. Yeah, it's a lot going on. How's yes, basketball going, Blake? Man, uh, it's not going the greatest. It's not going the greatest. We, took, we don't, we we don't have to go L. super deep either. So yeah, I we took another L last up. week. Uh, it's looking ugly, fellas. We'll we'll see what's going on. This, we'll see what's going on tomorrow. How's your boy's ankle? Uh, he's he's. Compound he's better, fracture. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what he's telling the group chat. You know, he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm never coming back. It's getting better. Um, but yeah, that guy. I think he's tapping out. He can he can see the writing on the wall. He's like, I'm never gonna play again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm gonna stay late after work tomorrow, Blake, and I'll come watch you play. Uh, I think our game tomorrow's at. I don't know what time it is. I think it's midnight. Six thirty. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like yeah, it's actually at two a.m. So don't even worry. About it. <laughs> no, no, you committed. I want you there. If you're not there, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> you're not a good friend. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, then we'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get on to the uh, review here, fellas. Um, Nathaniel, if the listener here is new or maybe they've just forgotten, can you give them a rundown of how the review segment works? If you've forgotten, what the heck are you doing? Huh? Come on. You don't listen to us every week? Yeah, what the heck? That's really inappropriate. Inappropriate. Uh, anyways, if you have forgotten or maybe you are new, uh, the way the review segment works here on Back Row Banter is it is broken down into two sections. There's, there's the non-spoiler section, and then there's the spoiler section. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, in the non-spoiler section, we'll go over the movie itself, its IMDb page, who wrote it, who's in it, all of that good stuff. Uh, then we'll go on to spoiler time. I'll play a spoiler noise. If you don't have anything spoiled for you, go ahead and check out, but check back in uh, based on the timestamps in the show notes. Because we'll be ranking it up on our entropy list, which is our big list of everything we've watched on the podcast. Ranked. With that being said, Adam, tell me about Challengers. And then I, I need to put in a, a synth sting right now. So it could be like, you do. You do. Um, cue the synth sting. Uh, welcome, listeners, to the main review segment. Of course, this is Challengers, a new movie. Rated R with a runtime of 2 hours and 11 minutes and an IMDb rating of 7.8 out of 10. Uh, it's directed by Luca Guadagnino. L- close Luce? enough. Luce? Nailed it. Uh, yeah, close <laughs> enough. Um, and it's written by Justin Karitskis. Karitskis? Um, Nailed it. He's... These are some tough names. You know, honestly, if you just if you don't pause and try and say it multiple times, people just believe you. Yeah, just go confidence. Yeah, that is true. Well, I I just <laughs> like to be courteous to the fact that I'm trying my best right. to pronounce right. to pronounce you. their names. I, I don't just want to butcher it, butcher it and move on. Uh, Nathaniel um, Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, and the cast Peelsky. includes. Hey, hey Ron. <laughs> <laughs> the cla- yeah. cast includes yeah, right. <laughs> Zendaya, Mike Faced, Faust, Faced, uh, and uh, Josh O'Connor. Is it Faced, Nathaniel? You said it earlier. I think it's Faced, yeah. It's I'm spelled, assuming it's just Faced. Spelled Faced. Um, Total Face yeah. on the floor. And Josh O'Connor. Art. Um, quick question, fellas. What's Zendaya's last name? So that's a good question because I actually had this conversation with one of my buddies maybe the other week, and nobody knew. Turkington. I think she just goes by one name. She's got like like seal. Seal she goes by one Fuck name. Yeah. I I I, go, I go Which I like. Correct. Her IMDb is just one name. She, her stage name is just Zendaya. Um, her but her full name is Zendaya Marie Stormer Coleman. Turkington. Oh. Hmm. Okay. That is what she was born. So Zendaya is actually her first name. Her real first yes. name. Yes. And her stage name. I can commend it. Correct. Can Honestly, I if the, I was her, I would just. The government name ran with it. I would just change my last name if I was her to uh, Atreides. <laughs> Zendaya Atreides. <laughs> I'm with you, Ty. I'm with you, Ty. That's a good, good, a good call. <laughs> um, uh, what's next here? IMDb summary. Um, IMDb summary reads as follows: uh, Tashi, 
a former tennis prodigy turned coach turned her husband into a champion, but to overcome a losing streak, he needs to face his ex best friend and Tashi's ex boyfriend. Okay. Yikes. Okay. What a what a plot setup. Drama. You know? What a, what right a, off the yeah, rip. What a dramatic setup. Soap opera. Uh, not much to fill in there. That is essentially what what we're looking at here. Yeah, but it's told in a different. It's told in a much different way. Structure, yeah. Story, story structure here is wow. bouncing all over the place. This is um, mm. the the main the main through line that that the story keeps coming back to is mm. is modern day, which I think is technically actually set in like 2019. Yep. Um, at a challengers tournament <laughs> between the two, in the finals of a challengers tournament, uh, the two being uh, Art Donaldson, Patrick Zweig, uh, the two tennis players. Um, those uh it's a it's a finals match between them and a challengers tournament but then it's cutting back you're getting context for the drama that is this tennis match you're cutting back all the way to i think as early as 2004 early 2000s in that area um when art and patrick were best friends and then met tashi and then the little love triangle that has uh kind of pursued or continued for the the next 15 ish years to uh, all the way to 2019 so that is that is how the story is set up um that is kind of what we're looking at here and uh what are our thoughts here fellows i've seen quite a bit of people talking pretty highly on this movie um some saying that if dune wasn't released this year this would be their favorite movie of the year i would say this would be number three for me right now dune two being number one civil war being number two this is, this is probably up there as number three for me I'd, uh, as far as like new movies go it's up there. I'm, I'm. I had a good time here. Obviously, I'm a tennis fan myself, but I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts before I ramble on about how this wasn't a, or was a great tennis movie. Uh, Nathaniel, what are your thoughts here? Mm. Yeah, so I saw this last night at uh, a late show. Um, so got to got to it um, pretty recently, like you know, close to recording time here. Um, I am overall positive on this film. Um, I think it is strong. I think it's a good mix into this year's, uh, you know, film. I think people will be talking about this one at the end of the year. Um, I think Luca's directing is on point. I think the soundtrack is a, an enormous strength of this movie. I think it's one of the best things about it. I think the editing is done really well performances are actually where i think the movie lets me down a little bit um i think i don't know if that's maybe weight of my own expectations but um i think that the characters are maybe a little undercooked um and the performances don't quite carry it um through for me but uh, at the end i found myself enjoying my time and um excited you know that it was out there and to talk about so yeah, Tyler, how you been feeling? Um, I saw this, I think, like, last Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah, so almost immediately after we recorded, I think I went and saw this, like, the next day. Um, Or you guys recorded. Well, I didn't do it last week, did I? Was I moving? I think you were. I was. It's been a long... Yeah. It's been a minute. <laughs> so The boys... Bad, man. Yeah. The boys are having some trials. Yeah. Squadron. <clears throat> We almost lost another one today. That's true. But he survived. Yeah. He's here. Anyways, um I'm 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 pretty positive on this movie. Um I don't think this will be by the time we get to the end of the year, I don't think this will be really anywhere near my conversation or like, man, I got to watch that again. Um but that's just because it's coming out a little bit earlier and um, I'm actually relatively surprised, but you said it got a 7.8 on IMDb. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little yep. strong for where I'd probably put it at. I do like this movie. Um, one of the things I did like where some people might fall off is kind of how we were talking without going into too much detail of where there is a very center line of where the story takes place. And then you're mm -hmm. constantly flashing back and, and forward and um, I actually liked it. I thought it was actually um, laid out pretty methodically. I thought it was really well thought out. I didn't think I was lost at any point in the movie. No. I thought I knew uh, exactly where I was. And 
Um, I don't think there was any confusion, and I think that that was something that actually played out to me very well by the end of the movie. I was like, yeah. this was good. I, I Sometimes when you get into movies like that, you can kind of get a little confused, or sometimes they don't do a very good job of aging the characters, so you don't know like where it actually is. I think overall with the timeline, um, uh, they they did a, a really, really good job with kind of everything, so I was very happy with that. Um, and then, like Nathaniel said, the soundtrack was something that I also thought uh, carried this pretty well. Um, we did talk a little bit before uh, uh, we started uh, hooking up everything because uh, I, w- I am in person today. I'm at, I'm at HQ because That's I no right. longer have like strong internet, so I'll be here for the remainder of uh, for the foreseeable future. But um, we got a bunk for him up in the attic. Yep. He's living in his car. <laughs> <laughs> the attic. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it was a, a little bit more of the, the performances that we can kind of get into. Um, but other than that, I, I'm a, I'd have to say I'm a recommend for the most part. Oh, yeah, I'm a recommend for sure. Yeah. I think uh, to that point, I think this is a movie that for me does, does actually nail the ending. Which like yeah. is a uh, is more than a lot of movies. I do think a lot say. of people are gonna be upset, just from like your typical movie goer, not somebody sure. that actually sits there and will like analyze why the ending is the way that it was, mm. or you know, it's not your maybe your typical like happy love story. Everybody, mm. you know, but like, yeah, I I would say that for sure they definitely for for us, mm. uh, I think they nailed the ending for sure. Blake? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I was able to catch this yesterday and um, went in relatively blind. Uh, I knew it all the Zendaya and tennis, mm. just from kind of I was having on the short list, but didn't really know much else about it, right? I didn't know if it was going to be more like a sports tennis film, a drama that involves somebody playing tennis. Right. Most so seems to be the latter. Um so yeah, I went in blind, and o- overall, I, I would say I like this. And Daya, I my appreciation for her is growing. She's a really good actress, um, and I feel like most people are probably already on board with that, having seen you. Um, and but, Dune yeah. Two, yeah, right. Dune Two is obviously kind of what put it on the map, but you right, like, I never saw that. So <laughs> Dune Two is was kind of my, I don't want to say my introduction to her because she does play what's her character's name in the Spider Man films? Is it MJ? It Whatever is her MJ. makeshift yeah, character's MJ. name is. Um, so yeah, but my appreciation is is grown for her a lot. She's a she's an awesome, awesome actress. Um, her range of emotions is very in depth. But uh, yeah, overall, I would, like I said, I, I would like it going in blind. Um, now this is also the same director who did the Suspiria remake. This I don't know if true. we touched on that earlier. Um, which is a film that is. On finish so i started that a few months back um never finished it seen the original um it, for those of you who don't know it's about like a cult of witches but we'll deep dive that later so once i saw that i was like oh i know who i know who that is right so i was kind of tuned in for this movie and yeah overall i like it runtime for me it it works i didn't feel like i was sitting in the theater being like drug along right for lack of a better word and um the only thing that kind of bothered me the most, well, actually, I'll touch on that spoilers. Overall, I like it. Win in blind, good movie, romantic drama element, has some sports involved. A lot of shit I can get behind. I'm, I'm in. Adam, I would imagine this has got to be your, the reason this is on the short list is because you're on this podcast. Probably. I, would probably <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yes and no. Obviously, I want to okay. see this. Any any kind of tennis themed movie, I'm gonna want to see, especially when it has Zendaya in it. Um, but it was just also getting some buzz, so I was definitely intrigued um, and wanted to 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 see what it was all about. Uh, that being said, as, you know, as I said earlier, I de- I'm I'm definitely pretty high on this. I had a good time. I think the way the story is told and 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 kind of how they decide or what information they decide to give you in in the pacing in which they they present it to you is really well done to the point where you kind of get that climax and Nathaniel side you guys said you like the ending i'm pretty mixed on it not it what? Uh, yeah uh, we can get we can get into it in spoilers um wow. so obviously we're we sure not spoilers here uh but uh 
overall, yeah, I think this is this is a really fun movie. Soundtrack, as Nathaniel mentioned, is great. Editing, as Nathaniel also mentioned, is great. Um, I would also say the directing and like the shot choices and just some of the shots that they do are really good. Tennis mm. is. I'm still searching for that tennis movie that I feel like encapsulates what it's like to be on the court, and this is sort of there. There are some. They take some creative choices here. Um, I really. I mean, minor spoilers. There's a shot where, um, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, they go under the court and it's kind of they're playing on like almost like a glass court and you can see the lines, but they're playing on top of you almost. Uh, really well done cool. shot there. Yeah, cool shot there. Um, they they do some interesting camera things when on the court um, that come close ish to like something I'd like to see on a bigger scale, but they're not quite there. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's good. It's, it, it, it's got some tension to it. It's got some drama uh, and what very well acted. I like the tight knit. I like that. It's really only those three characters that we get. Like you, you don't get screen time in this movie. That's not those three characters. I like kind of just like this tight knit story there. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's, it's good. It's, is it the most amazing thing I've ever seen? Absolutely not, but it is a fun movie. Um, for the most part, and uh, I'm definitely recommend. Uh, would 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 recommend you go see this if you can. Um, if not in theaters, on streaming at some point. But yeah, I'm a recommend. Is that a recommend all around, fellas? Yeah, I'm a yeah. recommend. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're. Yeah. All right. Uh, well then, with all that being said, let's go ahead and head in the spoilers. If you, so, if you've not seen Challengers and do not want it spoiled for you, go ahead and check the episode description where I've left a timestamp you could jump to. Where you'll be taking to our ranking of the movie Hub Upon our entropy list. Uh, spoiler time, Nathan. Somebody breaks a knee. Break a leg. Which I had oversold to me and overhyped to me by film Twitter, by the way. Oh. You thought bones I, were going like, to pop out? It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. That's what everyone was like. Oh, her leg I went into this so really nasty. blind, so I didn't know what to expect at all. Yeah. All I knew yeah, was that it was about tennis. Mm-hmm. That's it. Then now, he- I guess let me. Okay, so I guess let me kind of jump into this here and then. I want to hear Adam's perspective. Mm-hmm. Is this like, is this a film you were like waiting on for some time? Right? Or like, where is this at in your. Yeah, like, where, wh- how were you anticipating this What's movie? What's your hype? Because I, yeah. I didn't even, because I took the week off, so I looked on um, the the YouTube page quick, because I was listening to the recording anyways, and I saw that it was Challenger, so I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to go see this. I had no idea what the fuck it was about. I didn't even know it was coming out. I didn't even know, like, what the name was. All I knew was, like, when I looked at it, it was about tennis. Right. Oh. Uh uh, yeah, it wasn't like my most anticipated movie. I remember seeing the trailer when it dropped just because of film Twitter kind of putting it on my feed um, and then Algorithms. not really looking into it much after that. And then all of a sudden it came out and like people were like, oh, it's actually really good. Uh, but I could tell from the first trailer that it, it was m- more of what happens off the court than on the court. I'm kind of I'm kind of still waiting for that tennis tennis movie you know what i mean sure. um and knew this probably wasn't going to be it and it really wasn't for the most part i mean th- this is probably like in terms of like tennis movies i mean you look at like wimbledon with like kirsten dunce and it's probably better than that and and sure. there was that one a couple years ago with emma stone and and steve carell um so, battle of the sexes i think um so if you play mary jane you're gonna play tennis right there's that there's that <laughs> there's that line too where if you play uh spider-man significant other you will be in a tennis movie after. Um, uh, it's, but yeah, it's, it, a, it's a Spider-Man and then a war movie and then tennis well, is what yeah, I saw. Peter Parker's <laughs> go into a war movie and yeah. the, the, the Mary Jane the, goes into uh, a tennis movie. Yeah, the the significant others go into a tennis movie. Yeah. There you go. That is that is what you're destined for. Um, but yeah, but this is, wasn't a movie. I was like, oh, I can't wait to see this. Um, in fact, I wasn't even sure we were going to do it on pod or anything until it started getting good reviews. And I was like, all right, then maybe we should probably check it out. I was probably going to see it regardless, but in terms of like getting it on pod, that was, uh, wasn't something I was like, need to do this, you know? Okay. Got it. Now I'm curious, what were your guys' reactions to the events as they unfolded once you guys got in, since you guys were going into it pretty blind? Um, I, I told, so I, I got home Leah saw the movie was. I saw it was it was decent. I liked it. It was pretty good. Uh so I gave her the down low and she's like, I fucking hate it. 
<laughs> and uh, I was because like I I kind of led with like I'm just kind of mad at Zendaya now, I'm like she's kind of a bitch. Yeah, come back, <laughs> but she's not. Yeah, so but she's the only one. Like, all right, this <laughs> she's the only one in that movie that I feel like has the mindset of a professional athlete. Sure, like of all mm, the sure. people that I have ever met yeah. that have yeah. gone pro, they're all a little mm. fucking crazy. Yeah, in their yeah. own way. Like they just are. You have to be to be that to be that driven, right. and they don't give a fuck about you. Like they they live on their own. Yeah, sure. But you married you married you like you willingly that, married. That's someone. just how it is, bro. Like I I, I don't know. Like and I, it doesn't make it okay to like you, hey you I cheated on you. I'm a professional athlete. Go fuck yourself. How's that? <laughs> How's that? I got money, fame, and I'm the best at what I fucking do. Fuck you. All right. Tiger. That's not okay. <laughs> this still doesn't make it okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying it happens. It ha- yeah, right. Yeah. Like I and you know, I don't hate her for it. I feel like she's up front pretty pretty early on in that movie. Like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I don't know. Also, <laughs> I guess yeah, sure, in like the first couple of years, but when you decide to marry someone, yeah, well Yeah, yeah I, that's <laughs> I'm more mad that they just didn't keep it as like a thruple. Like that's sure. clearly what they were working towards. Sure. Like mm. my guys were just like, Yeah, we used to jerk off together. Yeah. But uh boner slaps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boner slaps for the boys. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like uh, yeah, all right. We can we can talk more about it, but like I'm on the opinion the movie was not horny enough. They could have been okay. more. All right. Well. I, they could have been more horny. I agree with you, Nathaniel. How they how do you all horny. feel about um like they there's a child involved with context. There's a child involved in this film, not obviously in sexual acts, but they have a right, child together. Right, 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 yeah. Um how do you all feel about that? Like, it's like that's like never really deep dive or anything. It's almost yeah, just like, oh point. yeah, they have a kid. Yeah. And like nobody cares. Like brings up anything about it. You know, it's. I think that's that, the only thing where I was kind of like, ah, eh, it's a little. I think that ties into one of the points and kind of one of my like sticking points that I did have with the movie was that there was a lot that it felt like it brought up that it didn't really then sure. go mm-hmm. on to answer. One of which was kind of like the kid. Another which was like Tashi's race, which is brought up like as a subject mm-hmm. once or twice as well too. Um, and then there was just some, some other kind of like little things that were kind of brought up throughout the movie, which like, I think to, to the film's credit, like it is, it is a tight two eleven to kind of what Blake was saying earlier. Like I, there's no part of this where I felt like, well, this is a waste of time or anything like that. And I think right. it does, I think it really does actually tie together well in the back, in the end of the movie. Like it, it was right in that thread for me where i was like this could really just fall flat on its face but it managed to pull it off mostly in my opinion at the end um but i think yeah i thought i thought that was a little bit of a weird point to your point blake that they do just kind of have this girl and like she doesn't want to stay in a house like she likes to stay in hotels apparently and that's why they're always in penthouses Mm mm-hmm but then it's never really brought up again after that kind of thing, other than just kind of like as a character detail. No, you, I mean, you're that didn't right. bother me. I mean, okay, she likes to stay in hotels when they travel. Like, I guess. No, I just think like it, it, for me, it was speaking to a wider thing of like, there's so much more I wanted to know about these characters that the movie okay, did not sure, seem sure. like it was Got very it. willing to talk about beyond that you know yeah i mean like, i think let's g- it's it's at the it's at the sacrifice of of giving you the background of these characters in relation to each other rather yeah. than the background of the characters but individually i, I think like a movie sense. i think like a movie like creed or creed 2 handles that and balances that a little bit better while still maintaining sure. those those you know story what it what it, it wants its story to be as well too you know so are you saying in terms of like battling the contrast of like relationships with like sports on the outside of that is that kind of what you're yeah what you're saying and, while also talking about like the other things that happen in the life of a sportsman i.e children and like what yep, it means, i got you. like yep. uh, to their you know what their race means to their culture or where or their place mm-hmm. in the world as well too or something like that like it, it, my friend brought this up as well too they're like i i do wonder if the original script was w- written and was tashi a woman of color at that point or something like that or right. was it yeah. only after 
Zendaya was brought on as well too, just because of kind of mm. the rate at which it's brought up in the dialogue without ever really affecting the plot. Like mm. she, it's it's only ever really mentioned. She's like, oh yeah, my opponents are racist. Or then she's like, sure, and, and then right, she was like right. later on, she's like, well, I'm taking such good care of my little white boys. And it's like, okay, well, those are things that you're saying, but I'm not seeing that necessarily play out in the same way that you're bringing it up in the other elements of the story as well, too. And again, this is just, uh, it's, it's just a kind of a side thing that I was noting as well, too. I think the movie overall more or less works with that, but just mm, in, in yeah. contrast to something like Creed or something like that, uh, which I think handles it maybe a little bit better. Yeah, I don't. I I never necessarily saw this movie trying to make commentary on race. No, I'm. Um, I feel like I'm getting. Those... Feel like I'm getting sidetracked over there as well too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you. I think to be honest, yeah, I think you might be a little bit getting sidetracked. Although there is a lot of commentary of race in tennis because it is predominantly white sport, and right. you've had tennis stars like Serena Venus, and now you have Francis Tiafo, Coco Golf. Um, you know, have all these other figures, people of color that have come up. So. It, 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 so it's you know getting better in that sense, but I mean there's still a huge conversation of race when it comes to tennis and like yes, while on those you know on the large scale like you do have some role models for people to look up to in, in that regard. If you look at like high school level tennis, juniors level tennis, like it's still predominantly white. Um, so you definitely have that. Is, that is a thing to 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 uh, for some tennis movie to consider. Um, and while it is maybe a, a bigger point to talk about in this one, it is not, I think, the central focus of the movie. But it could have been interesting if they brought it up a little bit more. I don't know. I guess the point, I, the larger point I was trying to make with that was, uh, for me, there is a part in this performance from Zendaya that I don't think she quite nails. Like she's, What part is that? Uh, I think it's mostly when she's playing older. Like, uh, mm -hmm. she doesn't quite have the gravitas. Doesn't quite... She, like, she kind of, like, when she goes into, like, I'm old and I'm serious mode, she defaults into this kind of, like, lower voice tone, and it just doesn't quite have kind of this weight to you just, it. Yeah, you just, don't, you just don't feel like she's been through it. Like yeah, you just you you know, it's and just... I think that, but I also I think that's also reflected in, in Mike Face as well too. I think the only one that's really playing both young and old in this one well is the Josh O'Connor character. And I, I think can that's agree because that I think that's because yeah. he's truly acting as himself. He's truly acting like a, he knows he's a piece of shit. Yeah, and man, so but and he says it, and so he's like, I'm I've I know who the fuck I am. You're over here trying to play fake ass people like this isn't who you are like you need to start acting like who you really are yeah but like he plays boyish well and sure. then he plays 32 year old guy yeah. as well like i think you feel you going... feel the time difference yeah. more with yeah. his character than you do with the other two because it, it definitely feels like the art we're seeing in in the earlier flashbacks is still kind of the art we see in that final match exactly same thing with tashi yeah, you definitely feel his 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 challenger tournaments that he's played in all these years. You feel yeah. that in his character. There. And I think that is what makes the end work for me in total is that that is the point in the film where I do feel like they are all actually playing their age. And like it does feel to me like two grown men and a woman working through some shit in the last final like five minutes and doing it in tennis and we finally get the engagement of the tennis is a conversation metaphor we're really playing real tennis and i think he does pull that off and so the movie does work for me but uh it's it, actually the metaphor was relationship sure yeah what i thought she said <laughs> conversation relationship yeah but like to the point like my, where one of my friends another of my friends that saw it was like I wanted it to end like we don't see the end of the match. It's cut to, and then later we see all three of them dancing in a club <laughs> together, and you're just like, <laughs> "How did it end?" <laughs> like, and that's right, it. Right, like, right. did they did they all get off on that? Did they all <laughs> like, yeah? So I don't know. It was. I found myself coming out of it impressed, but a little bit frustrated. True. Sure. I, I think I'm a little that. bit lower on the... I don't know if I'd use the word impressed, but I was... I guess I would say I was pleasantly surprised going into sure. this as blind as I was. Yeah. 
Um, because it also I had takes no... a second to warm up, you know, especially if you're not a tennis person. It, even I, I am a tennis person, and it took me a second to kind of get on board with with what was going on and and the story that was being told. You know, I don't know if that played too much into it for At least me. That's how I felt. Yeah, I just I because I mean, you said it. It was like you know, you got the feeling that a majority of this movie was going to be taking place off of tennis rather than like in tennis, and so. Right. Right. I, I would agree with that being somebody that came into this super blind. And so I think I was just more involved or enthralled by the story, regardless of, of tennis. I think den- tennis was just kind of like the, the byproduct for the metaphor that they were using. And you could have probably told the story a million different ways with a million different sports, but it was done really well. Mm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think my only, my only, issue that you know kind of nathaniel hit on was more or less the the aging it just didn't quite i i feel like when you saw them in like 2006 they definitely look like their age but maybe they just weren't playing um you know like the the 30 year olds um at least in zendaya's case i just wish she I, they did an okay job with giving her like the mom cut the mom bob uh, to you know, kind of <laughs> yeah. you know, dress her up uh, to be a little bit older, and you know, having a kid and everything like that. But yeah, for some odd reason, I just didn't get like the gravity of who she was or what she's been through. Even though, like you know, we saw her, you know, go through her injuries and struggle with. She that she's twenty seven, so she's getting close to the thirty two that she was supposed to be yeah. thirty one or thirty two, whatever it was. Not quite there, but she's getting close. Well, Hollywood people don't age like regular people, so. That's like, true. Right. She already <laughs> just looks young in general, quote unquote, right? Like yeah. she looks like she could pass for like a 23 or something like that. Well, she uh, plays a high schooler in Euphoria, so. Yeah. Like yeah. She's, I don't know. She was probably 23 in that first season, 25 sure. in that second one. So maybe even younger. Yeah. Um. So, okay, so my question is, so like, Adam, how do you feel about, like, so now we were talking about how, this probably could have been a byproduct of any sport, right? And it's mm-hmm. more so just a love triangle, right? More so. But, like, how are the scenes to you where they're actually playing? Like, how does that look to you? Because, like, sometimes in certain films, that can drive me watching people play, like, football and stuff. It's just like, oh, this looks really bad. But, like, like how, how, does, how, how, does that... how does their form and everything look? Or, like, how they're yeah, like how, yeah. stuff? Yeah. Pretty, how, do they pretty cut it how does that look good? For the for most the part, part. Um, obviously, there's a few things here and there. It was funny because when uh, when Patrick Zweig puts his arm up and keeps it there for his serve and doesn't do any kind of motion with it, his arm just stays back. I'm like, that's an awful way to serve. And then and <laughs> then they make a note of it later on where it's like, you can't be serving like that anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And so like so like stuff like that was 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 good. Um, for the most part, though, yeah, they, they cut it up pretty good. I, I, I could tell they were kind of using some CG to get away with a lot of stuff. Uh, of I course. think a lot of those wider rallies that you were seeing, they looked like CG um, tennis balls, and they were probably weren't hitting much um, when they were actually acting. Um, but for the most part, you know, they, they get away with it pretty well. I felt like the directing of of how they decided to, to shoot the tennis was pretty interesting. They did some first-person shots. Um, which were were interesting. The angle that they had was pretty good. I had uh, when I think someone was either serving or returning, but that that was like a very familiar angle of like looking across the net, looks further away than it really is, like that kind of thing, um, with the wider lens. Um, and then they had the on ball shot, which I thought was kind of weird. Didn't really work all that well for me, where they like the the camera was on the ball and spinning as they were hitting it. Those things. I don't know. There's, there's gotta be, someone's gotta figure out a better way to shoot tennis, like, and just make it more intense than, than having a camera in the back. And I don't know this, this, they, they were trying some creative things here. It just doesn't, it, having played the sport, there's, there's just gotta be something more and and the editing could be tighter or, or just more action to it. Um, mm. but I don't know in terms of their actual, like though, like you're saying, like their form and stuff like that, no, nothing that stood out, dramatically that bothered me too much what i what i did notice is and i don't know if this is something most people notice there was a serve at one point in the game where um it had i think it was some kind of um uh kick serve that that you'll see the ball kind of bend in almost like a wiffle ball kind of motion um and that was cool to see because that is actually how those serves look like that looks like they're going down and then it'll do a little kick and then it'll come up and do it like a weird bounce that's how mm. those serves look a lot of the times so they're hard to pretty hard to hit so that was cool that they included something like that 
Um, but yeah, the, the quality of tennis in terms of how they made it look was was pretty on par, I would say. In, in terms of how close you can get for a movie like this, I would say it's right. pretty good. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Um, Favorite scenes? I think uh, I think the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um I it was I mean it was Chekhov's tennis racket signal, right? Like you were yeah. uh, you were waiting for that 100%. to come back. In, yeah, I man, said it like out a, loud to myself. I was yeah. like, "Oh, he's going to give him the signal." Yeah. And then he's going to know. But then uh, the, the the last, you know, minute and a half after that where then they do kind of just are well, just like well, fuck it, I know, but let's fucking ball. We're gonna, like, play, we're gonna play tennis. Yeah, that I did. Like, it worked for me. Like, it genuinely. Yeah, I I think uh, I liked the kind of whole full circle idea. Mm. Um, it's still I think just it. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like the morals in me. Not True. that I have like no, yeah, I a it. lot, but you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, Traditional family values. Yeah, there's <laughs> just a, there's some, you know, things that I don't know, just maybe run me. Mm. And so like me having just like such a great idea of like Zendaya in my head, I was like, you piece of shit. <laughs> She's know, a night, the night before. She's a nice way. young lady. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, I, but, uh, but yeah, I think you know everything came full circle. I really like the idea. I, I literally, again, I said it to myself because it wasn't a very packed theater. I think it was like on a Thursday like afternoon, and I was just kind of like, "We're playing tennis," <laughs> <laughs> and so we know so, ball. Yeah, so it's uh, everything came together, and then uh, she she yelled, and then uh, he jumped into his boy's arms, and I was like, "Yeah, well, you know, maybe they'll just like break up with her and realize that she really is a piece of shit, <laughs> and like they'll just be boys again." <laughs> So, so there was a part of me there that I was like, for the fucking boys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, I really like the first time when they both see her play. Sure. And that, like, you just get the, you get that kind of like slow zoom in on both of them yeah. as like, and I think he does a really good job of timing when people are looking Sure. And with the rest of the crowd, and then like he'll occasionally have them look like an extra beat so that they get off with the rest of the crowd. Yeah, as well yeah, too. they're just holding on to her for yeah. one, and then they'll quickly go back. Yeah, yep. it's it's a really cool stuff in yeah. there as well too. I think um, I think Luca has a really good visual eye for solitary shots. I think he is a little bit more behind when things move in his shots. Sure. Like, his his composition on, like, still frames or almost still life, like, there's one, I think, a couple different times where it's just, like, a shot of their legs or, like, they'll be, like, brushing or, like, hitting their racket on their, like, leg or their shoe or something yeah. like that. And a lot of those are really cool. They, they're, they're set up really well, like, within the edit as well, too. There's a lot of uh, really long extended kind of breaks and holds on characters as you get to kind of watch that. And, like, as a film fan, I always enjoy that because it, it, it allows you to breathe and allow you to kind of, like, fill in those moments for the character for yourself. Sure. But, um it doesn't make the most dynamic movie. And then when it does go to those shots for like instance, when the camera is in the ball or something like that, it can make those feel even more kind of alien or like they don't quite fit, fit in with, with the rest of the movie. Else. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. You could definitely tell, uh, the racket camera, the ball camera, which are all things again I liked. I, I did thought, too. I thought those were I really think he cool. He did a really good job at yeah. putting those in there and yeah, and kind of breaking the monotony of the movie up. Yeah, um, I think that's something for us as film fans we'll yeah. enjoy. But like again, the modern contemporary yeah. American going to see it, I, maybe not so much. It, well, even something like that, if 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 the editing wasn't done as well as it is, it could have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. um but i think everything was done very smoothly yeah uh even the shot that uh adam was referencing where you kind of got like the glass bottom you're shooting up that was cool. you see the lines yeah. the balls was really cool. it was great and uh they were really nice because again you weren't really expecting them in this based on what you've seen prior right. to those shots and well, that's what uh, I was gonna say really is they're good. not they're not overused at all, and I no, think that's why they're no, kind of effective. As, as you don't see them until the last part of the movie, whereas like I feel like in a lot of other movies, it's some it's something that you would go back to, whereas like those shots were kind of used once, and then you don't see them again. 
and, and, and to, it was just and he he shakes him up a lot. And to your point, I buy physically that all that all of them are are tennis players. Except oh, yeah. for Zendaya a little bit, just because I'm like Serena and Venus Williams didn't look like that. Like Jack. They, they were yeah, sure. <laughs> a little yeah, different yeah, yeah. overall. But you know, there's I can allow that as well too, you know. But both I think Mike Faced and, and Josh O'Connor in this like red as tennis players to oh, yeah. me. For sure. Gentlemen, I just realized I have my tennis rackets over behind me a little bit. So Uh-oh. perfect. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, we're we're getting full in. We're getting full into it. You keep it. that tennis ball away from the center of that racket, sir. <laughs> <laughs> if only we had video, it'd, it'd be a better bit. Okay, I'll kill you. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Cannot. Now, isn't um, speaking of tennis accessories, isn't Wilson the most like widely used tennis brand, right? Yeah. Um, I feel like that's what they're mainly known Wilson's for. Wilson's the the main one. Well, well, since probably the most popular, but there's a Dunlop. bunch of them. Yeah, mine are Dunlops. So that's what I have. Wilson Dunlop is another one. Um, I'm trying to think. Of, Yamaha, I think, is another one. How expensive those um, get? Like, what's like I a, think they a couple hundred bucks? Yeah. yeah, two to three hundred oh, usually. Really? I mean, wow. obviously, like the pros are all sponsored. They can go through them. Like, they can just right. yeah, it's like that's why yeah. they smash yeah. as many yeah. rackets yeah. as they want. Yeah, it's like they golf clubs. Buy another one. If I smash that thing, my parents would have beat me so hard uh and and the strings are expensive too i went through because they break pretty easily um uh, you go through usually one or two pairs of strings in a season that when i would play in high school uh pros get their uh rackets restrung after every match pretty much Hmm. um so that's usually like that'll run you like 50 bucks uh, I mean, maybe not, not maybe not for it. the average person, right. but or you know, for somebody that's playing, but like a pro. Why would they get Because replacing the strings is 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 the same thing as getting a new racket. I mean, it's not really. I don't know. If I think I'm a pro, yeah. I'm just gonna be like, don't don't fucking bother with the string. I'll just buy a whole new. Just give me a whole new thing. <laughs> there was I a. Mean, it's not that. Deep. There was a golf pro. I think his name his he was an Asian guy, but I feel like his nickname was like Jumbo or something. And he was like kind of known as one of golf's great like free thinkers. And he would uh, he would t- have his sponsor deliver him his clubs in batches of ten, and then he would go out to the driving range and hit all ten. 10 times or whatever and pick whichever one hit the furthest to take carry in his thing his idea being that just there were quality assurance among the different ones there would be some Mm. that would be better than others kind of thing and he would just always stack his bags with the best ones he could find basically i wonder if there's like some old guy who was like around for like the inception of tennis who's like the best racket stringer (laughs) in like the world you know what i mean yeah 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 (laughs) Like a blacksmith that's yeah. like the, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. That's a guy in Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A sportsman in Kill Bill. Yeah. Uh, Tori Hanzo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are Hanzo strings. This was, this was strung by Tashi. <laughs> yeah. <The> Tashi. <laughs> the Duncanator. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then she fucking um, kissed me. <laughs> and then I, and then I kissed her. Then we kissed each other. And then I kissed her husband. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing right there. He was watching the whole time. Yeah. He just starts kissing everyone in the room. <laughs> then I kissed her mom. Uh, any other um, big points we want to shout out here, fellas? Nah, I'm good. Nah, I think I think we've hit it all. Um, but like I said, I kind of echo earlier. Going in blind, it was like it. It fit. I was fine with it. Which yeah. which one fit better for you, Blake? Uh, what were you saying? Actually, never mind. That that joke's a little bit too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, uh, I want to give one last shout out to the soundtrack. For sure. the, the the synths coming in. <laughs> the score <laughs> this is awesome. The synths coming yeah, in were, I think the, were electrifying. The score and the daylight photography, like it's very rich. The color on this one, it looks good. Agreed. Agreed. All right, are we good? Yeah. See. Welcome back, listeners who skipped over the spoiler segment of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and throw challengers up upon 
our entropy list. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the entropy list is back or banter's official list of all the movies we have reviewed, regardless of genre, regardless of anything else, all on one fantastic list. Uh, this is essentially how we rate our movies. Rather than do it on a five stars out of ten, whatever it is, we throw up all the movies we review on a list and see how they compare to one another. If you want to reference the entropy list for yourself, you can do so by checking the episode description where it is linked to my letterbox. Um, episode 188 and entry 185 here on the entry list. I never found out what happened to Mission Impossible on this list. I swear to God it was on here at some point. I don't know how. Who knows? It got taken off. Whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still not... I, Tyler never ranked it, so, like, you know, maybe it doesn't belong on this list anyway. Anyway, uh, let's see. Challengers. Let's see. Where, where's King Richard at? That's that one's pretty low. Oh, I like this way more than King Richard, though. For sure. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. King Richard was kind of lame. Uh, King Richard's at one forty-five. Ooh, yeah. So pretty. Where's pretty uh? Low. How many creeds do we have on here? Did we just have Creed three? Yeah. I think we. I think we just had Creed three. We didn't. Yeah. Cthread. Uh, we we dropped the ball on that one. That first Kith Red. Kith Red's 96. Yeah. This is kind of a tough one. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. This is tough. Now, Coherence does have a ping pong paddle <laughs> on the movie poster. True. Mm -hmm. True. True. I like Can Coherence more basis. than this. <laughs> right. Same. I would agree. Um, this is actually tough. We got La La Land at ninety. What about that one? Above or below? This is above. I'm gonna kill someone with this tennis racket here in a second. I mean, I, I, I mean, Nathaniel's got to be on that same boat, and I think Blake's probably somewhere on that same boat. Do we like this more than Creed Three? Creed Three's at ninety six. Uh, I don't Jonathan know. Majors I would really like Creed Three. Figure. All right. I think I would maybe put this because I think I like Creed maybe one and two before Creed, Creed Three. three. So yeah. it's kind of sure. like X. if I'm willing to put both of those above this or above that, then I got to be willing to put this above that. True. Yeah. Facts. Descent's kind of Facts. a hard cap. I completely yeah. forgot. I completely forgot we did Barbarian on Pod. Yeah, I remember watching that movie, <laughs> but I have no memory of us reviewing that movie. Uh, I don't think we did it in real time. I think that's something we got to maybe five or six. Months yeah, ago. yeah, I think it was too. But yeah. Um. All right, I'm willing to. I'm willing to trade off the descent for for Blade being a hard cap. So, oh, fuck Predators right there too, dude. This is wild. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go nine or eighty nine. Above or below Oof. Pinocchio? Uh, above Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm probably pretty good with that, too. I mean, like, again, I like all of those movies around there. I do, too, it, with the exception of La La Land. Um, and Nightmare Alley is kind of forgettable. I like La La Land as well, too. But, but like I said, I'm willing to... If I can keep Blade and Predator above above this, I'm willing to, to let yeah, go of I'll, the descent, I'll back which is hard. I'll go 89. Oh man. Um this is this is tough for me. Seeing the descent at 92 like that descent malignant and barbarian is just really tough. Three horror movies yeah. that I love a ton. Um I do ultimately like this more than Creed, but then now that like I'm going back and looking at films that we've done recently, I see Late Night with the Devil at and it's like, you know what? I really like that movie. Sure. Um, but you kind of got to give or take a little bit. So I'll, I'll probably, I would, I would situate it above that just because Frank is <laughs> right. So I think I got to take somewhere in, in the middle. I'll, I'll, I'll rip it 96. 96 blows soul above Creed. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody goes. So Blake's ninety six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sing that. Where, <laughs> Ty and you Athena, where were you guys again? Uh, eighty nine. It's You guys right. are both eighty nine. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. 
All right. I'm a little torn. It's hard for me to put this. Tear it up. Above La La Land, but there are some movies that La La Land's too low for me. So like, I almost have to like ignore that one. Um. Yeah, there's there's a there's La La Land, Malignant, and Barbarian are the ones where I'm like, I really don't want to, and probably. Actually, I don't know about A Quiet Place, but those three are ones like I don't want to put this above, but then I look at Nightmare Alley, Paid in Full. Actually, maybe, I don't know. Nightmare Alley for sure. Blade, Frozen 2, Predator, and Pinocchio. Those are ones where like I want to put this above those. So I'm kind of torn. I think I'm just going to split kind of the middle there and not go above La La Land, and I'll put it at 91 above the Fablemans and below La La Land. Um, okay. Kind of, kind of splitting those. Uh, and then that gives us an average rating of oh, what the hell just happened here? Uh, it was ninety six, ninety one, and two eighty nines. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You what got has so to You got knows. the friend in me. <laughs> Stop it, Randy Newman. You got the friend in me. <laughs> Mother folks. There we go. Uh, 91.25 is the final rating, which means it will go below the Fablemans and above the Descent. No. <laughs> I just died. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, Blake. You can always use your re-rank next year. I was year. like, yeah, can, can I just keep doing the same fucking thing <laughs> every year? Just pushing or, the Descent higher. Hey, I mean, yeah. as long as it keeps getting better. I, lo- I love the idea, the the. Th- the storyline, the lore that every year <laughs> Blake moves the descent up <laughs> yeah, higher. For sure. Yeah, I may have to, man. All right. Well, we have the challengers down there now at 92. Good spot for it, I think. Uh, yeah. Our review next week will be a movie called Fall Guys. No, it is not a movie about uh, battle royales of like little cute guys running <laughs> obstacle courses. <laughs> It is a movie about Ryan Gosling playing a stuntman, and Emily Blunt's in it, too. So uh, it's supposed to be good. We're going to go see it in theaters, and then uh, we'll get back to you on, uh, next it. week on what we think. Uh, do we want to do a quick round of what we're watching, fellas? Could do. Okay, you got, you One or two things here. I don't here. care what you guys want to do on your shit. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, Tyler, what have you been watching? Uh, my Hero. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, just a shit ton of My Hero. Um, we don't, uh, we don't have very good internets mm. out at, uh, Wonder oh, Lake. Yeah. So streaming is kind of like out of the question for most things. Just can't handle it. Physical media. Yeah. So, uh, I do have some, uh, some Blu-rays that I'll probably end up going back to. There you go. Um, but, uh, my phone's been kind of like my, I was gonna say my main source. Anytime you need to borrow from the back row banter library yeah. <laughs> here at Back Row HQ, you are more than welcome. Much appreciated. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I've just been kind of jamming out on things that are easy to access on my phone because service actually isn't that great out there either. I'm sure. Um, on like the kitchen level, I get uh like 4G LTE. Nice. <laughs> and, nice. And it is slow. Great for 2015. Yeah. And uh, and we thought it was fast. It's not. <laughs> so and uh, up in the bedroom, I get five G, but it's like a bar and a half, so yeah. it's still relatively slow. <laughs> so it's been a lot of YouTube, uh, a lot of um, shorter shorter kind of content. But uh, my hero has been kind of like my main thing that I've been watching. So it's been uh, it's been a blast so far, and I'm glad I went back. Nathaniel, uh, I saw Boy Kills World. In uh, in theaters on Boy Meets Sunday. World's a great show. Uh, different, <laughs> um, different. Uh, but that's the one with the with the dude that plays Pennywise, where he's like mute, and deaf. Yeah, and then he's got the Archer guy providing his voiceover. Got it. As he basically goes monkey man on some people. So um, yeah, it's 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 fun. It's worth the worth a watch. I would think. I think most of the. Most of the boys would enjoy it, kind of in that bullet train level of like fun, but knows what it is. Um, okay. The other thing I've been doing, I've been reading, boys. Done been Ooh. using my eyeballs. Just because you get a Barnes and Noble job, he's a big <laughs> reader over there, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. It's true. They put me in charge of the horror section, so I need Are to. They really? Yeah, I need to show out, obviously. So oh, that's um, cool. 
Yeah, my my book that I've been reading this week is called Fantastic Land. And it is basically if Lord of the Flies was happened at Disney World. Right. So <laughs> Um, yeah, it, and it, it fucking ruled. It's so good. Um, <laughs> it's basically, so there's a third theme park in Florida called Fantastic Land. Um, it's split into like seven different sections. And what happens- Is that a real theme park? In the context or, of the book it is, yeah. Got it, got it. Uh, <laughs> and so what happens is a hurricane comes in, and it basically, it basically cuts off the park from everywhere else. But they, the park's like- uh, operating procedure was to have like a skeleton crew of employees that like look over the park in disaster situations sure. so immediately like within two days after the power goes out like they separate into tribes in the different sections of like future land adventure land kind of thing yeah and then they're all start attacking each other and stuff but it's all <laughs> Wait, told this sounds awesome it's all told in interviews so it's like it's all in flashback. Cool. So you're interviewing the survivors basically, yeah. and they're telling you what happened over this time. Wait, period. this sounds really yeah. Dude, cool. It's so fucking good. I'm not even That's kidding. Uh, that so sounds really good. I sold five copies on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I sold my store out of copies. I had to order more in. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's so, funny. Uh, yeah, I've killed been, it over there, Barnes and Noble. I've man. been reading Fantastic Land. It yeah, he's is gonna be CEO soon. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be like, this guy talked about this book. He read it. He actually fucking read it. Because that's like the hardest part. People yeah. tell us they read, they don't. <laughs> he knows what he's talking They're about. They're just a bunch of stoners, and all they want to do is just sit here. Bunch of idiots. This kid actually yeah. reads, <laughs> and then he sells the fuck out of this book. <laughs> And memberships. Memberships are up 500%. It's true. <laughs> Not Barnes & Noble memberships. Best Buy memberships. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I don't know how. We didn't even give him register access. He's still getting it. He's telling people about a Barnes & Noble's credit card. We don't have that. <laughs> yeah. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> He's talking about 24 months financing on collector sets. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's got a bank of credit. He got a line of credit open at the bank for us. We don't we don't know how that happened. And that's how oh I took god. over Amazon. Oh my god. So that's how Barnes and Noble took down Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Screw hey, you, you, got, you, got, you got the last three Dune books over there at Barnes and Noble. Oh, Oakland? dude, I mean, we got a whole table set up for Dune right now. I got all, th- oh, really? I got all the Boon books, you, and all the Dune books boom, you can watch. The Boon books, the Boon Doom, the Doom books, the Boon Doom Boon books. Those are the. When, when are you working next? I might come down and grab the last three. I, I think I'm tomorrow. determined to finish. Uh, I'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, baby. You can roll. All right, let me know the room. hours. I'm there. A whole table of the Badoom books. I got the Badoom books all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's what uh, I've been reading. Been watching that's stuff. what I've been watching. Right. You've been you've been reading slash watching. Blake. Um, yeah, I think I shot something in the chat the other day. I rewatched uh, Across the Spider Verse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I like that movie a lot. It's real so, good. So yeah, that's yeah, that's man. Very good movie. That's, that's that's good. Heavily anticipating the next one of that. Some um, some say it should be number one on the entropy list. I, I'm just I, I I mean yeah, I was gonna say I don't know how far off I am <laughs> to be clear you know what I mean but uh yeah I'm just trying to see um, if I can annoy Nathaniel that was another one where we were all like yeah top 10 for sure and Nathaniel was like guys slow down yeah he's big at he's big at pumping yeah, the brakes yeah, out of few things, yeah he but is managed he's, to he's a big buzzkill kind of guy <laughs> that's me um old wet blanket buzz- Nathaniel <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Um, really hates movies you know just (laughs) doesn't like anything (laughs) only talking about books yep uh but yeah that's that's a bulk of it for me i finished uh true detective season four um i don't know if we've talked about that yeah started that a few weeks ago hey for context for context listeners Cross the Spider Verse number ten on the entropy list right now (laughs) i really pushed that one down (laughs) Solid ranking for sure. Um, but yeah, like I said, was able to finish uh, season four of True Detective, which I believe Nathaniel finished some time. Back, I did. So we'll, yeah, what are your... 
I like think it. of that one? Uh, yeah, I like it. it I liked cool. it. Yeah, I mean, she, um, the director on it. I think she got another season out of it. I thought. Uh, oh, okay. I thought Callie Rose's was great. I thought she was really good overall. Who was mm-hmm. the detective Navarro? Uh, yeah, in there yeah. as well too. But I thought Jodie uh, Foster's character is yeah. so fucking annoying. Oh no, I loved her. I she's she's awesome she's, actress. She's, yes, yeah, she's, she's so fucking annoying. She's, she's not likable at all. No, yeah, she's she's yeah. I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed that season overall. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, but yeah, that's those kind of the two two main things I've hit. So um, yeah, that's it, uh, Adam. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of NBA playoffs. Have you been watching uh, any basketball? Blake? I'm with. I am. I'm with yeah. you. You Lakers got one Lakers. last chance to go see those uh, those Milwaukee Bucks. Or actually, wait, no. Are they back in Indiana? Yeah, so they're in Indiana tomorrow. Oh, in Indiana, Game right, 7 yeah. is Saturday, which I may try to. Ooh. Which I may, I may try to get up there and go to. Well, they, let me know if you need a traveling companion, depending on uh, ticket prices. That'd be... Dude, so, be yeah, bro, for sure. I looked at Game 5. So game 5 yesterday. And ticket prices for that, obviously, with the elimination, elimination game and then Dude, you can get tickets for like, like tenth row, bro, like seventy dollars. What? Yeah, but it was an eight thirty oh, game, shit. so it was just like a pain in the ass. Like, you know what I mean? It was yeah, an eight thirty yeah. game. It's a fucking Tuesday night, right. so obviously that skews ticket prices in there. Right on a Saturday, it's a different. Story, yeah, but. but like, yeah, bro, seventy bucks tenth row is like you can't really beat that shit, bro. But yeah, hey, man, whatever. just burn some PTO. It's worth it. When's the next time you're gonna yeah, do it? I probably should have. You're definitely right. But yeah, who who are you liking so far in the playoffs, Adam? What do you Wolves, you dude? Think? I mean, that's yeah, a that's a good. popular take, dude. But the Wolves they're look good. really good. Um, Lakers getting eliminated. Not not a shock at all to me. For sure. Um, I, I it was closer than I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like those games, you know, the game yeah. like Nuggets. Didn't have leads or 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 had you know or Lakers had leads in almost every single one of those games by like ten plus sure. points. Yeah. So that that was a little surprising to me. Nuggets needed to kind of lock in. It seems like uh, they they didn't seem to be trying all that hard in some of those games. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I think the Wolves could take them down. Um, Thunder looked good. Obviously, I I kind of expected that to be a sweep. I don't actually maybe not a sweep, but I didn't expect them to have much trouble against the Pelicans. Um, especially without Zion, and then um, yeah. hasn't been too many other surprises uh, outside of that. Really, everything else has kind of gone to to how I thought it would go. Um, Did you catch the uh, the Knicks uh, Sixers game yesterday? I, I, I did. Yeah, I I got sick yesterday. Well, yeah, I woke up. Well, you know what? It was funny. I was actually in my challenger screening. I show up to the theater. I'm like. Man, my throat's a little scratchy. This isn't good. <laughs> and then uh-huh. get out of the theater, and I was like, "Man, this really isn't good." Go to bed, wake up. Yeah, sure enough, like really very scratchy throat, a little bit of like congestion and drainage. I was like, "Ah, shit, I'm definitely getting sick." Mm-hmm. Um, so worked from home yesterday, and then um, as the day went on, just kind of got worse and worse. Had to call off from Best Buy, um, and then. By the time it night came around, I was like, I'm hurting. <laughs> I was just, I was just comatose in the bed. I had the Cubs game on my laptop, I had the Sixers Knicks game on my TV, and I was just like, just zoned out watching both of those. Great game though. So I did, sure. I did watch pretty much that whole game. Um, very back and forth, very entertaining game. I'd be, I'd be shocked if the Sixers ended up winning the series, and I'd be heartbroken for the Knicks because I think the Knicks deserve to win the series, but. It'd be kind of funny if they if they didn't because of how cursed that franchise is. Yeah. Um, good good so. for the sport of basketball. Just to have the New York Knicks like playing good basketball. Right. You right. know what I mean? So it's like, oh, they they, they are know. one piece away from being a true contender. I I I don't know if they have it this year just because it seems like Jalen Brunson's like their only true offensive yeah. weapon. He's you know good. yeah he's really good, but they they need a solid number two, and I don't really feel like they have that. Um, they're well built all around, but they don't have a very strong presence on the offense besides Jalen Brunson. Um, so we'll see. I think next year could be their year. This might just be more of a transition year, but I still think they should be able to beat the Sixers because the Sixers are kind of in the same spot where like it falls off after Maxi and, and, and Bede. 
Yeah, like after that, sure. you do they don't have they don't have the depth. The Knicks have much more depth, but the the Sixers are much more top heavy. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with that series. I don't think the the Knicks are gonna blow it though. I think they'll take it. Um, and from there, who knows? I think the Wolves right now look really good though, dude. And a- Anthony Edwards looks like he's the next yeah, up and right. coming guy to kind of take off the sure. NBA. Yeah. But they got to be entertaining. They got to beat the Nuggets, though, man. And the Nuggets they do, and that's a tall last that's year, and that's a tall a task. Tough task, absolutely. I, I mean, I like their matchup though, in terms of like their defense and like their starting matchups. Mm-hmm. I think they match up well against the Nuggets. I don't know what's yeah. their head-to-head this year on each other. Do you know? I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, um, but see. as we've kind of echoed last year, or from previous weeks, as well as for NFL two, Chiefs, and um, just once you, once you've won one and you know how to win goes a little so you're gonna yeah the t wolves they're gonna have to they're gonna have to beat them pretty handily and if the game's close i think the nuggets find a way to win uh denver and the wolves are two and two this season it looks like hmm. they the, both won uh, right. and lost two in breaking news since we've been recording ryan garcia tested positive for osterine for his fight with devin haney what is that a pd oh yeah yeah. Uh, Steroids. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, no place in box for like that, but like that's not surprising him. Like, I don't, as we said last week, Daniel, I don't think he cares about the integrity of boxing. Nah. That shit. I think he's like, I just want to make the most amount of money troll day. Yeah, like he wants like, to be famous. Fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. So, yeah. not surprising at all. He's the Drake of boxing, I've been yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy, easy way to put it for sure. I don't think he the politics of boxing and that's why yeah now does that discard that win though yeah it would or like he could overturn it so then does that win so i mean he didn't technically win it wouldn't be a loss on haney's record then right right? yeah because obviously the fight didn't count because he was over he missed weight yeah Yeah. Yeah, he didn't lose the belt because garcia missed weight but then it would go on to it would go and shift his record to a no contest i think Mm. yeah would he have to pay any of that back? I would probably like pay per view yeah, and he, stuff like that. Oh, he, think so? he, I think he'd have to pay his purse back, like his win bonus. Maybe not the pay per view money, but the win. Okay. The win. Right. Money. Although I don't know if you get. I don't know if it, I don't. It's not like MMA where they there's a pay or show and win. I think it's just a. They I think boxing contracts are a little different, but. I got gotcha. you right. So he may have he may have to pay something back. Though, I would, yeah, yeah yeah probably. Yeah. I wonder um, if it's more than what he made on pay-per-view anyways, though. Probably not. Right, so yeah, I don't think he cares. But anyways. Meh. Uh, only other thing I watched uh, is I've been watching Reacher. Ah, the, ha, ha, um, big man. The, sure. Yeah, the big, the big man, the big man show. Um, with what's his, what's his name? I already forgot his name. From, Alan um, Richardson. Alan Richardson from uh, Ministry of Unjustly Warfare. But... Uh, that was a show when I was down visiting my girlfriend over the weekend that we threw on. Um, and I enjoyed it more than I thought, so I've been it's, continuing to watch that. It's and better than it seasons. should be. It's very funny. It is. <laughs> it, it, no, it is funny. There's some good lines in there. It's some good characters. Um, I'm only on the first season. My girlfriend said she likes the second season more than the first. The second season know. gives him his team. He gets like a ah. he gets his team back, basically, where the first season is very much him on his own kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so I'll probably finish that out. I mean, that's there's only two seasons there. Uh, very fun show. Uh, the more I watch him, and the more, and and then I heard the fact that he would love to play Batman in the Gun NCU. I would love to see him play Batman in the Gun, or sorry, DCU. I mean, um, he's only the size of a refrigerator. Well, that's fine. Batman <laughs> can be the size of a. Refrigerator. Oh yeah, of course. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, he's a yeah huge human. Yeah, he's just got the charisma for it. He's already kind of got that like detective persona. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think I, I, it would make sense. He would look un- he would look good under the mask. Um, in that in that sense. Um, but also, Robert Pattinson keep those two Batmans separate, but keep them both going. You know, they can we can have two Batmans at once. I think that's you're fine. crazy. We can't have two Batmans. The we world can. cannot sustain two Batmans. Who really? played a uh, Batman in the f- shitty ass Flash movie? Batfleck. Is it Keaton? Well, it oh, Keaton. no, it was Keaton. It was Keaton. Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. thought you were referring uh, to Justice League. Well, that's well, a shitty movie, too. Well, so Batfleck is also in The Flash at the very beginning. True. 
Batfleck's dope. I wish they Batfleck would have got a solo solo Batfleck. Uh, I, 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 I don't I don't know if I need that. It's because you're lame. Let's get That's on out of here, boys. And 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 Christian Bale. Let, let, that's a good call, Nathaniel. Let's get on here. Um, please share the podcast here with a friend, a family member, uh, maybe a tennis player. Maybe you're playing some tennis and you need some background noise and you just want to throw on a podcast. Throw on Backrow Banter. Um, while you're doing that, after your tennis match, follow us on Twitter at Banter Row, on Instagram at Backrow Banter Pod, and our YouTube is just Back Row Banter. Please go subscribe to us there, even if it's not your primary place of listening. Um, We'll go to Tyler Vidalis today. Tyler, where can the people find you at, my da- my man? You can find me on Instagram, Letterbox, and X, all at Tyler Vidalis, V-I-D-A-L-E-S. Nathaniel? You can find me on uh, Instagram at NathanielG92. You can find everything on Twitter and Letterboxd at N.S. Gingrich. Sam Piper says Smiley Podcast. Blake? Yo, yo, uh, Letterboxd, Blake Holder, Instagram, PSN, Mr. Water Cooler. Um, yeah. Adam? You can find me on Twitter at H24 and on Letterboxd at H. That's A Y Y S H. Uh, I think that's going to do it here for episode 188 challenges. Uh, join us next week for our review of Fall Guys. Thank you all for listening, especially if you made it this far into the episode. You're my favorite type of listener, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Join us next week for Fall Guys. We'll be RB. I do think there is no defeating Drake, quote unquote, uh, to like the masses. But I do think you can like right. defeat him to his ego, and I think those are the things that Kendrick is able to accomplish. And the same thing Pusha T was able to do. You know what I mean? But as far uh, as I mean, something yeah. happening in the next album he puts out that's doesn't really have good. fucking a million streams in twelve hours. Like that's uh, never gonna happen. You know, know what I mean? Like he's because right, at the, the end of the day, I'm still gonna listen to that album. Yeah, right. <laughs> as I've already said, like I'm still gonna listen to. <sighs> Every project Jake Drake puts out, but in terms of like, in terms of like my respect for Drake, it's already dropped quite a bit <laughs> with all this beef and like, I don't know. Anyone anyone who thinks Drake's gonna out diss Kendrick, it's just like that's the one person I feel like he can't diss and like get yeah. away with. Thanks, you know what I mean? I, what a good friend. I agree, man, <laughs> and, and I even agree with like. With, I even hey, I'm gonna have I to one here more often. I'm big Push T fan too, I'm sorry, and Kendrick boys. fan, so that kind of skews my um oh. vision a little bit. But I feel like I can be pretty pretty unbiased. So I mean, I do like Drake. Even like like Kendrick said, I like Drake when he's making like melodic music. I'm totally fine with that. I don't want to hear Drake rapping about how he's the best rapper alive, right? Because that's not true. But if he makes like, I don't know, like I love Passion Fruit which is a very melodic, like, dance hall song. Fruit. You know what I mean? Like, I love when I Drake love makes Passion music Fruit. like that. I'm totally yeah. on board for that. If you can give me an album of 16 of those, that's great. And I'll spin it all day. You know what I mean? But I yeah. just, yeah, yeah. When, when he starts rapping like he's the best rapper live and like X, Y, Z, it's just like, no, nah, man, like, right. I don't want to hear that. And I think most people are probably on that side of the fence. Right. I like Drake I, for the I melodies. Guess. I don't like when he's acting. Yeah. Like right. <laughs> That would be my, that would be my guess. Um, yeah, but didn't expect Kendrick to reply at all, though. Honestly, that was crazy. I, well, that we talked about that, and I I, yeah. I agree. I, I I thought it was beneath him to release a dedicated diss track, but I guess it's not for Drake. I mean, if he's gonna be with anybody, I think that makes sense that it's yeah. Drake at least, the other biggest artist. And you're hip-hop. now unmuted. Um, you imagine if you just muted the whole podcast? <laughs> so I don't want to hear from Tyler today. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Kendrick killed him. <laughs> murdered him dude i listened to it again today i've listened to it yeah, about seven sure. times i've listened to it a lot actually yeah. too and i was not yeah, I, I, I didn't i did not give two fucks about it when <laughs> no. you guys were talking about it like last week i was like i don't fucking care about their <laughs> shitty beef and then uh, he put one out so i was like all right i'm gonna listen to it because i'd rather listen to kendrick's before before drake sure. yeah, yeah. 
So then I listened to it, and then I I meant to put it in the chat, but I told Nathaniel, and if you guys really care, I'll tell you. But I drove a lot this sure, week yeah. already. Mm-hmm. It's just been fucking wild. I've in, between Monday and Tuesday, I put in like 24 hours of work and probably uh anywhere from like 15 to 18 of that was just pure driving <laughs> so oh brother Jeez. um but uh so yeah i was on the road so i was like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna listen to it and uh mm-hmm. i think i listened to it probably like four maybe five times i mean it's deep enough while right? i was driving yeah, There's yeah enough layers. and then i started listening to uh, other podcast about breaking it down yeah. about like all the different disses in there and everything because I just don't keep up with it enough. But, like it's, I got to well, know. Well, and Kendrick's always working three levels deep on shit. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's half right. the joy of Kendrick yeah. versus is just getting to dissect them like that. Like yeah. So then I was then I was bought in. So I, I really just good. I saw Adam text the chat and then like I text like three of my buddies. I was just like, hey, <laughs> it's happening. Drake, Drake pissed off Kendrick. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drake done fucked but up. But you get yeah, you guys were talking about like uh like you guys were coming up with like funny things to be like he killed him or you know whatever in the chat and I meant to say it but I was driving and, I, and so I'll say it now but I was gonna say you know like my typical dad joke and I was just gonna be like I think A twenty four is gonna make a movie about this because it was just a straight <laughs> fucking slaughterhouse, dude. <laughs> but he's just like I ain't even, I I haven't even bleed him yet. Can I bleed him yet? And I was like, oh yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. When he started, is that when he starts talking about the kid? Yeah, uh, it was just after that, basically. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 He he goes from the you don't know nothing about that to the. Yeah, uh, dude, that was yeah. oh my god, that was the worst part. That was the worst diss about it for me. Is when he brought in <laughs> the father shit. Like my my takeaway, even like I think Nathaniel kind of hit it, hit on the head too in the chat, was just like I really don't think he likes Drake at all. No, he hates him. Like hates you know, like on a serious him. level for sure. I, and I think it's just yeah. everything he stands for from like integrity, music making, from a, all type of shit. From a you black know what I mean? culture yeah, so standpoint, like yeah, that, that's really tough. what it seemed to be like. Where he was just like, yeah. you do not fit in here, and like I'm taking yeah. a line in the stand, and like we are, yeah. we are drawing a battle that. line right now. And then, like, just yeah. the whole thing of, we don't want you to say that Dude. anymore. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> That's oh, my dead. God. <laughs> I was dead. I was dead when he said it the first time in the middle of the verse. And then when he ended on it, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's like, but maybe it's just me. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that would be anything. I guess it could just be cringy. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. he's just like I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, yeah, I, I don't. He doesn't like that guy at all. Dude, and I'm sure that's yeah. been brewing for a long time. Oh, you know what I mean? They finally yeah. had the opportunity to take jabs at it. But ultimately. Oh, no, I lost him. I lost him. Yeah, he went muted. I think it's the, the curse of the fucking roadcaster. You got GSP on that? I, I don't think it does anything to his career. But um, even like like we said last time, I knew. I knew Drake was transcended, like, when he was able to be, like, released in blackface photos and, like, people right. still, like, allow him in hip-hop space is, like, right. mind-blowing to me. No, I don't think... I don't like, think... a black male perspective, like, that was that was my straw. Like, I saw that and I was like, why would I ever listen to this guy's music ever again? Yeah. And Dr- it's pretty much the stance I've taken. Old Drake, cool. If I hear it out, of course, whatever. But as far as, like, man, a Drake album came out, I'm gonna go play it. Like, I can't support that dude. I've seen him in, like... He's in blackface in a Jim Crow t-shirt. It's like a meme. It yeah, almost looks yeah. fake. It's bad. <laughs> but it's real. Yeah. yeah. When did that happen? This that is, was the um, Pusha T beef. Yeah. So uh, Pusha T released that. that I'll, was, I'll have to send you the photo. I'm sure you can just search online and yeah, find it. Look at, I, I'm looking right shit. now. Look, story of added um, on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> oh my I, God, it's mind yeah. blowing, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like that was one of those where I saw that and I was just like, you know what, man? Like, I so, don't think I'm ever gonna support this guy's music. Pusha ever. released the released the single with that as the as the single photo. Yeah, and like no yeah, one had seen the, the yeah cover art for the song. That was it. Yeah. Oh yeah, my and then he basically and Drake's kind of stance on that. He came out. Well, he didn't make a diss track back to Pusha T, but his stance on that because this is like summer of 2018 or so. 2019, 18, 18. Um, and he kind of came out with like a long, like in a, a Drake statement, like it was like yeah. a, a social media statement, right? Of like, hey, like this was from a time when I was an actor and it had to do with like how black people or black um, actors are portrayed right. and typecasted. A bunch of bullshit, but it was like, that's still like, 
Man, you could, yeah. There's just no need to be dressed in blackface with a Jim Crow t-shirt if that's the message you're trying to get across. There's so many meetings and, like, think checklists that has to go through before he's right. like, it's a good cause, man, but yeah. can you take me out the blackface? Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, wow. bro. Fucking nuts. And he still makes hip-hop music. Yeah. And says nigga all the time. So it's like, eh, I think he'll be all right. Yeah, I I mean that's my takeaway too is like I don't think Kendrick th- Kendrick didn't kill his career like he's not like let's yeah, be honest it'll never like, happen. he's gonna make no. another hit in six months or whatever and it'll be fine but mm-hmm. like for the rap heads out there it's definitely ten eight Kendrick right now after that one right like yeah <laughs> which and like I like I've even seen people be like you know Kendrick didn't even bring up anything that like we didn't already know about or anything like that mm-hmm. but it's like at the same time it's also I've never heard Kendrick that angry, and I don't think I've ever heard. I've never heard him that like that angry, and it just like felt like he just like walked into the booth, had that off the top of his off the top of his head, and just ripped. Felt like a freestyle. Yeah, like like there wasn't a lot of punch ins. It didn't feel like like it felt like he was going bar for bar. Yeah, just just ripped it off the dome. Almost like a freestyle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely not meant to be the most pleasing, like sonically. Right or like very melodic. Like I don't think he cares about any of that. No, he's just um, like I got some shit to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. Yeah, it, and I do like. Um, I think Nathaniel sent the bar in there. I do like the the bar with uh with Pusha T and Terrence Crawford. Yeah, because <laughs> Pusha T is Terrence uh, Thornton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do like him to bring that in there. And I would just I would I would bet a bottom dollar that Drake does not address that line. No. Because no. I'm sure Pusha T is just waiting. Like, I hope yeah. he says anything about me. <laughs> well, what does you he know, say? You know, just so he can go back in, yeah. and I don't think he's going to say anything. About Doesn't Kendrick say, too, he's like, I'll pick up the beef for Pharrell? He's just like, I'll, I'll pick yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would I would love to. I'm sure Drake will reply, and I'm really interested to see if he has any I don't think he should. I think he should, but I think he will. So, I wonder. I, should, I genuinely will reply. I genuinely wonder if Kendrick was going to until he released the thing with the AI Tupac on it. Like, I feel like that was the thing mm. that pushed Kendrick over the edge of like, like a disrespect to like one of his heroes kind of thing where he was just like, well, yeah. the gloves are off now. Fuck this noise. Like, yeah. Do I have to battle AI or ghosts or whatever like right. he says in there? And then he's like, I love the. Yeah, he, it's not the twenty v one. It's one v twenty. It's one v twenty. Yeah. If I got a slap um, on the bitches that write with you. Yeah. And um. Yeah. I, I think you're you're hitting home with the Tupac thing. Obviously, like to pimp a butterfly is a play on that right. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. That, I would imagine that's probably his album he holds closest to his heart. Right. Yeah, or it could be Mr. Morale. I don't know. I would imagine it's one of those two. Yeah. Right. Um. In terms of everything he stands for, but then also just um. Drake using the Tupac plan AI and then uh, Kendrick having the line of like, you know, like that's the last thing I'll do, which is like let a Canadian nigga let Pac roll in his grave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is like very comical too. Like, fuck out of here, bro. Like, that's the last thing I'm gonna let him. Um Yeah, man. Funny. I wonder where this goes, but I would I'm really interested to see when he replies if does he have anything to say about Pusha T in that line, and I guarantee the answer is no. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, and just like, who, what, who could you bring up as a metaphor? Like, Terrence Crawford is the best right now. Yeah, like, this. yeah, that was a good, <laughs> that was a good bar. Yeah, like, Bud Crawford is not anyone I want to mess with at any given point. And yeah. he's like the one boxer that everyone agrees. Like, hey, if you if you wanted to go to MMA, he probably could because he can wrestle. Mm. 